So let's talk real quickly about feedback. I just want to get right to it. But the basic point is there's a lot of different ways to get it. Some of it's very obvious. You know, you have your annotations and your comments on the assignments. Um, one of the things those kind of looking at this and researching it is that there's other ways to do feedback. You might not think of a rubric as doing feedback, but realize a rubric is giving them that direct feedback as well. Here's what you did good. Here's what you need to improve on. Here's why you got only 10 out of 20 points, things like that. Um, one that I never would have thought of, but it's a great point, is you can also use the um, message students who function inside the gradebook in order to give feedback, which is kind of common sense, but we don't think of it that way. We tend to think of that as that's the device that I use in order to nag students who haven't turned the assignment in. But you can actually, for example, message anybody who got over 90% on assignment, say, great job. You know, you can give them feedback that way. But we're going to talk about the feedback that most of you are also thinking about, which is I've got that assignment. Let's show, you know, let's give them some direct feedback on it. All right, so let me switch over. Here we are. All right, so I assume everybody's looking at our assignment, student feedback assignment. You do see that I have a rubric that's going to come into play in a little bit. Um, but I just go into speed grader. All right. And it sounds like most of you are pretty familiar with doing this. And I actually did recorded a video on this, which we'll talk about in a bit. So there's already some annotations in there. But uh, gosh, since you guys are all pros, Roland, what do you do on this screen? Uh, normally what I would do is I would take a highlighter and then I would highlight a section and then I would put a comment on the box in the box that pops up, whatever it was I wanted to point out. That's a very common thing I might do Perfect. or something like this. And I think that might be the most common thing that people do is you want to make a comment, but you want them to know exactly what it's referring to. So we highlight it and then yep, over here, we click on this icon right here to expand the comment and say, this is awesome, or it should be better, or this should be eight paragraphs, or you didn't cite it, you know, whatever you want to say right there. And then the nice thing about that is it's linked, and I highlighted way too much, but it's linked directly to this highlighted section here. It's not just some free floating comment, especially if you say something very specific, like this paragraph should be moved. You want to make sure that they know that it's the third paragraph you're talking about. Okay, uh, what else have you guys done on this page? Yeah, I'll need to volunteer. I'm going to volunteer you in a second. <laughs> so, hi, Nancy. So what do you do on this page? And you can even say I do the same as Roland if you want to weasel out. Uh, well, yeah, I just make comments in the, the comment section. And okay, and that's that, another very common that's, thing. That's where I do it. And I would, because um, I would say, you know, question number 13 is a division problem, and this is the procedure or whatever. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So that's the very basic thing. If you're looking, and again, right. that's awesome to do that. Just you're going to type something directly. Hey, on question 13, you forgot to flip the fraction because we have to do that in division of fractions, right? So right. something like that. And that's awesome. And that's great. And even that is a huge benefit to your students, giving them that individual feedback. I'm just curious. And again, say you're, feel free to say no. Have you used any of the other buttons like attach a file or make a media comment, anything like that? I do attach a file because for um, all the worksheets that I have for this particular class, I've um, created solutions. And so even though I'll individually comment, then I usually attach, here's, here's the solution so you can see how I have um, solved all the problems in this worksheet. Perfect. So yep, again, say blah, 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 flip the denominator, whatever. And then if you want, you click on this file attachment. And if you have the videos running down the side, you might need to move those videos to see this, but there's a paper clip here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she said, you can click on here and here is my, you know, here's how to divide fractions handout, you know? So we can do that. You can even make reference to it. I'm attaching a handout, please read section seven, which explains how to divide fractions. Awesome. Right. Uh, have any of you ever used the media? button here? No. 
let me, I'm going to turn it off. I'm not going to walk through it because it's going to be tough while we're doing Zoom, but you can actually record. That's something that can be very easy if all of us have had that thing where we say, God, it'd be so much easier to just talk a person through it than actually type it out. That's great. You know, you can even do it for the whole essay. Say, hey, I'm going to point out three things to you. First, you know, on this section, you did great. On the other end, on this section, so you can talk people through the assignment. So if you click on that, you also have video. Most people don't want that because it freaks them out. I understand, but it's a nice audio thing. It's also a change of pace. A lot of classes are so text-based that an audio feedback actually just kind of stands out and gets their attention. So if something really important, like you're walking them through a rough draft from an assignment, you might just hit that play button and, you know, Lisa's going to take three to four minutes and say, all right, I'm going to walk you through your first draft of this. It's pretty good. I want to draw your attention to three things you need to improve going forward. So it's a, it's a, something that really kind of leaps out rather than just, again, a whole block of text. Nothing wrong with any of those. Again, they're all great and it's good feedback, but these are some other tools for you. Okay. Tim, Tim was yeah. there a, a, used to be like a speaker icon? Is that the same thing or am I just dreaming? No, you're not dreaming. What they did was they combined... Do you see the pop-up window? Yeah. Okay. So you have microphone and webcam, and you can also upload if you record it somewhere else. So they kind of put all those buttons into one place, record audio, record video, upload audio, upload video, all on one button. So no, you're not hallucinating. You're exactly right. They just put it all in one button now. So if I was to do the record audio there, does it just record it directly and then drop it in there? Or does it create a file, which I would later on have to attach? Depends which way you do it. So if you're just doing like we talked about, Lisa giving that student feedback, you'd want to record it and it drops it in. However, if in Nancy's case, half the people missed question 13, she could actually make a recording or a walkthrough of how to do problem 13 and then use that upload audio or upload video so she doesn't have to record it 14 times for 14 different students. She mm -hmm. just says, hey, I'm going to walk you through problem 14. Okay. Okay. Great question. Does that make sense to everybody, the four different things there? Yeah. And Tim, you yeah. may answer this later, but how do I know that my students are actually then looking at these comments, looking on the solutions? That is a great question. And yes, we're going to talk about it, but the short answer is you can't. Okay, it is the lead a horse to water thing. There is no like grayed out hyperlink or changing color so that you can see that they did it. You can put it there. Uh, we're going to talk in a bit about how students can view it. We actually have made a video, um, and I don't think I sent it to you. I'm going to send it to you. I just picked a couple teachers at random that I knew of, but I'll send it to you on that that walks students through the process so you can give them that video and say, here's showing you how to do it so we can get that horse to water very effectively. But no, there is nothing like a grayed out link where you know then that that student has actually viewed it or that they've played that icon or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, that is that is a problem. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. You can just get them the feedback and that's all you can do. Okay. Related right. to that, Kim, um, do students know that I've commented or do they have to proactively go in and look and see if I've commented? They have to proactively do that. So that's why I would really teach that. If you're going to do that regularly, again, we're going to get you this video um, in the next day or two, I actually have some people who are looking at it. I just want to make sure since this is something so many people have asked for, I want to make sure it meets the needs. Um, and by the way, it's a seven minute video, which terrifies me. I don't like, but the fact is the path to view it is very different depending upon your device. So we have a, here's how to view it on a computer. Here's how to view it on an iOS device. And as Colin and I just found out, because we did this simultaneously, iOS and Android is a very different path. So tell your students, sorry, it's seven minutes long, but view the third of it that makes sense for you. So each of those is about two to three minutes long. But yeah, as you said, Roland, teach them in advance, tell them to go in and look for it. If you're going to have annotations there, give them that video so that they know how to do it. You might even want to put in the announcements. Hey, I graded all of your midterms or major projects. There are significant annotations, but yeah, you just have to communicate that, unfortunately. Okay. Tim, if this works out, could this be put into the mod zero modular? 
Yes, that's that's the intention is we're going to have mod zero and part of that will be sending them to the student YouTube page. And we're actually planning on shooting a whole bunch of these videos. This is the first one. The two that we know everybody asked for were the viewing comments because we've already run into that. We're what, 12 minutes into it. And we've got like three questions on that topic already. So we know that. And the other big one is um, controlling notifications. Everybody wants students to have that video. So we'll do some others, but those two are first out of the gate are those two videos. And then just the basic, here's how to navigate your class. And that'll be in mod zero, okay? All right, uh, just so you guys know, some of the other buttons, what you're doing is great. If you're wondering what are these other doohickeys, okay, you've got, and it's basically the exact same thing in a different format. I can do a uh, point, I wanna say pin, <clears throat> a point annotation. It's the exact same thing, but it's putting a point somewhere, okay? I can do highlight what you said. I can do a block of text somewhere like that, and I can change the color and the size, or I can do strike through, okay? Again, it's all the same stuff that you guys do. That's why we're gonna spend 45 seconds on it, but you do have some options there. Uh, and then you have, um, like a block of text, you even have a free draw. Like if you wanted to say, move this down, things like that. Again, all of it is the same process of, you know, change this, move this, this is awesome. This needs more work. You just kind of pick which tool best gonna work, you know, depending upon whether you're telling them to move a block of text or this word right here is spelled wrong, you know, use a different device for it. Okay, so any questions on that? Okay, so, the um, the last thing to show you, let me get out of there, is, let me, and man, Zoom is really good at no matter where I put your guys' screen, your guys' faces are always blocking the button I'm looking for, like 99% of the time. Uh, one other thing to show you, I wouldn't do this for you know one paragraph assignments because it's more work than that. But like Roland was talking about some of his major projects that he does uh, right here. Have you guys done the download submissions button yet? I got a no, I got a no. Lisa, how about you? No. Okay, what this allows you to do is to download everybody's submission and then you can annotate it on your computer outside of Canvas and then re-upload it and what they will do is they will actually see um, in the comment section that annotated version and um, they can open that. So uh, I'm thinking since we're already halfway through, I'm going to just kind of tell you about it. And if you have any questions, but it's pretty simple, what you do is you click on download submissions and it's going to download a zip file of all of the submissions, whether it's two or 57. And then the key is you have to keep the same file name and the same zip file name. So the easiest thing to do is do something like open it up on your desktop, open up the zip file, and then you can just upload every student's assignment, make your annotations, and then just resave it. So that keeps it the same name. Otherwise, you have to remember what the name of every file is, and that's a nightmare. So you can do that, and then you re-upload it. Make sure it has that same name, which almost always will be submissions.zip, you re-upload it using this link right here, the re-upload submissions. And then when the student goes in, what they will see, let me reopen SpeedGrader now that I closed it. Oh, actually, nope, I wanna show it from their perspective. So let me go over to, Okay, and so you guys see this student screen here on their screen, it says see attached file. So again, you wanna make them like Roland said, make sure they're aware of it because Canvas doesn't have bright flashing lights saying click here, click here, this is really important. Roland spent two hours giving you advice. I wish Canvas had that feature, but it doesn't. So it's Roland's job to post an announcement saying, hey, I spent two hours giving you advice. But if they click on this learner analysis right here, it's gonna open up the annotated version that Roland created there. 
Okay, so again, for just adding comments like you saw right there, that might not be a good feature for you. But if you're sitting down with like some midterm projects or a big essay, that might be much more useful. Just download all of them, work on them on your own time outside of SpeedGrader in Word, resave them, and then upload them back up. And I will do the how to do this. I will send a link that actually gives you pretty pictures and all that stuff in the resources email I always send out. But it's really not that hard. The only hard thing is what we talked about. You have to make sure stuff stays the same name and you upload the right file. The process itself is actually a piece of cake. Okay. So that is instructor feedback. Any questions before we lean into students actually viewing your instructor feedback? Okay, so it looks like all of you guys have a pretty good idea of that and how to do that. So I am Joe Student. We've already talked about this, but let me browbeat it one more time because we know this is a huge issue. You've got to communicate to them whatever that looks like, you know, whether it's Lisa posting an announcement, Roland sending emails to the class, you know, Nancy taking the first five minutes of class and saying, hey, make sure you click on this, you know, whatever that looks like, we, we want to do that so that they know it exists. Okay, they will see, I assume everybody sees over to the right here where it says student feedback assignment, correct? There will be a direct link to them. I'm gonna show you the long way because that will always work. There might not be a link there. For example, um, if it's an undated assignment, it tends to not show up there in their to-do list and items like that. So your student clicks on grades and they see their grades and they see the student feedback assignment. They have their basic information. They see 85 out of 100 and they have these two icons here. This lets the student know that you made a comment so they can click on it and read it. And here it is. This icon here lets them know that there is a rubric that they can also view. And what I found is most students make it to this point. Okay, what you really want to stress to them is if you did any additional work, it's not going to show up on this page. I know it's a pain. You know, I wish instructor would have some sort of, as you said, some sort of flashing alarm saying you're not all the way there, but you just really kind of need to train your students on every assignment to click on the assignment link. Okay, and now, first of all, they have all the same information. They've got the rubric, they've got the score, they have your comments off to the side. They can download this annotated one that we created for them. And the link that you're really looking for is view feedback. And so whatever you can do to point your students to that link, that's the place where the communication is breaking down with the students. And in fairness to them, notice all the buttons we had to click in order to get to this point. So if students say, I can't find it, it's a very fair point. So they go on grades, they click on the assignment, they click on the individual assignment, and then click on view feedback. And that then will pull up their annotated assignment. It's like right here, you can see the annotations in there, but that's how they get to it. That's how they view it. They do have their comment here, which you know, hopefully you'll encourage your students to say, thank you very much, or I don't understand why I only got 15 points, or I'm confused, why is paragraph two incorrect? Or how did you get 17 as an answer when I got 583 million? You know, whatever goes on there. So you can, they can type that in as well, okay? So really, I think that walks us through uh, everything that we're going to go through. I know it's a catastrophic disaster to finish eight minutes early, but that shows you guys how to add the comments, the feedback, the annotations, even the media feedback, attach files, and it shows your students how to go in and get to it. And really, I think a lot of this, you know, other than the pathway is pretty simple. The big thing is just, you know, if any of you find the magic bullet for how to communicate to your students to get to this screen right here, then please share it with the rest of the class, because this really seems to be, and especially that last step, a lot of students get to that grade and don't get to this last page. So really stress getting your students to there. Okay, so any questions from anyone? Yeah, I have one more question. If yeah. I do a quiz, um, there's a, there's a place where I can make comments generally for the little quiz. And then in each question, I have a comment field as well. And a lot mm -hmm. of times people comment for each question. How will that appear to students? Uh, that depends. Are you doing right answer, wrong answer, or general? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. 
Okay. When you do a comment on a particular question, you have yeah. like, the, and I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I think it's like green and red and gray or something like that. So in other words, you can make a comment if they get the question right, which is, you know, let's stick with Nancy's example, because I love my fractions. Great job. You remember to flip the second fraction. You can do a red comment which is if they get it wrong. Now, Nancy's guessing, but the number one reason people would miss that problem would be because they'd forget to flip the second. So she can say, hey, that's not the right answer. Remember, when you divide fractions, you have to flip the second term. You know, it could be that the person said that two times two was eight, in which case that is useless. But, you know, if you know that there's a reason a lot of people are gonna miss this, you can put up a generic wrong answer. And then you can also put up a general answer, which goes to everybody, which says, hey, the right way to do this is, or for further information, click here. So you can target those comments to everybody. And Roland, you're looking really quizzical, like you've never seen that feature before. <laughs> I wanna play <laughs> poker with you someday, my friend. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. That, okay. That, I think I've ever seen a green and red and a gray. It's, it's, so go go look at it. And my apologies if that was in a past iteration and I'm speaking incorrectly, but you should have the ability to provide correct feedback, incorrect feedback, and general feedback. And I'll look at it too. And if if I may send you a screenshot or something like that, but let's also hook up if you want to walk through it and show you how to do that. Because there is that functionality in Canvas to say, good job, you did this you'll be nice from this, but bad job, you should have done this. And hey, everybody, here's how to do this properly. Okay. Okay. All right. And then let me open up the chat window. I was going to share this out. But as I said, let me get a shareable link. I decided that since there were this was such a requested one. I'm actually looking for some feedback. So I put the link to the YouTube video there. As I said, it's a little over seven minutes long, but if you guys want to click on it, if you've got any feedback that you want to give us, you know, hey, this was confusing, or hopefully you'll say it's perfect and it meets all my needs, you know, give yourself a 10% pay raise. Awesome. But we love feedback. Uh, I am going to send this link out with the resource that I always send out the next day. So this will be going out tomorrow. So if you see something wrong, please let me know. Um, I actually was going to send it out today, but I then realized that I had some work of mine from WGU that had my student ID on it. I don't care that much, but best practice, I'm going to fuzz that out in the video before sending it out and a few minor things like that. Okay. So there's your link to it. Other than that, have a great day, everyone. Any questions before we say adios or comments? Okay, then have a great day, everybody. We will talk to you later. And again, any and all feedback appreciated. Enjoy yourselves. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Quite welcome.